endelea kutazama Kapuchin TV huduma katoliki ya uinjilishaji Journey to Sainthood The Life and Times of the Servant of God Maurice Michael Cardinal Tunga with Asasha Elizabeth A very warm uh, good morning uh, and thank you very much for joining this discourse journey to sainthood the life and times of the servant of god maurice michael cardinal otunga you are with me asasha elizabeth and as we continue with this it is uh, uh, very paramount to mention that uh, yesterday wednesday the 6th of uh, september 2000 and uh, three marked exactly 20 years since this great man of God uh, went to be with the Lord. Uh, that is when he breathed his last at the wee hours of uh, Saturday 6th of September 2003 at the Mata Misericordia Hospital. And we continue to bring you this conversation to update you on the process. How far is the beatification and canonization process and what is needed to be done on your part uh, as a Catholic faithful or even uh, a non-Catholic uh, who believes, of course, in the existence of uh, a supernatural being, whether you call him Allah, where, where, whatever mm -hmm. name that you call him, uh, provided he is uh, our creator. So now today we are uh, uh, saying in today's discourse, we seek to glean a better insight into the person of Morris Cardinal Otunga and especially uh, his parent, that is his mother, uh, Mama Rosa Namisi. And we also want to understand more about who he was, how did he interact. And with me in studio, I have two family members. I will give them time to introduce themselves as it is the normal before we start our conversation. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Oriana. Vera. Eh. Eh. Engo valio. Engo bolas. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much for making time for the conversation. I appreciate the opportunity. And you look good. I Thank must you. admit. Thank you. All right. Please tell uh, our viewer who you are and how you relate to the servant of God, Cardinal Otunga. I am Dr. Bridget Serengo, Cardinal Otunga, the servant of God, was my uncle, a brother to my father. That is uh, how we are related. Mm -hmm. So I am his, proudly to say, I'm his niece. Mm, wow. <laughs> Nasi Milimai, thank you for coming. Thank you. So uh, we have a gentleman also right here who somehow uh, has... Uh, some uh, resemblance to uh, our, the servant of God. Please introduce yourself and tell us how are you related to him? Thank you so much for having me, Elizabeth and the, the studio. Uh, my names are Simon Wanyoni Kalipo. Uh, the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Dunga, was a follower of my brother. Mm -hmm. That means he had two brothers from his mother's womb. Mm -hmm. The firstborn brother was called Johnny 
Kalipo, who is my father. Mm -hmm. And then the last born brother was called Christopher Nakitari. Mm -hmm. so that's how we are related to the red servant of God, Cardinal Mike. So you are the mm -hmm. first uh, grandson of uh, Mama Namisi Rosa, who is the biological mother to the servant of God? Yes, I'm um, the first grandson of Rosa Namisi mm -hmm. in that home. All right. Thank you very much for coming, Papa. Thank you. All right, and my name is Sasha Elizabeth, and as usual, we give you an opportunity to contribute to our discussion. So feel free to weigh in, and uh, you can use our number 0717424866 or 0741114031. Also, you can uh, reach us or drop your comments and feedback on our social media platforms. That is a uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. So the hashtag to use is Johnny to sainthood hashtag cardinal of tunga and uh, on we start uh, with the conversation as i mentioned before is that yesterday we marked uh, 20 the 20th anniversary of the servant of god and uh, many faithful have uh, filled up uh, the queen of apostles catholic church in uh, rua raka just uh, a stone throw away where the servant of god retired uh, at the nyumba yawaze and now first i just want to get a comment as we begin of how was the commemoration because both of them uh, mr wanyoni and uh, mrs uh, uh, bridget uh, were there uh, at uh, this commemoration of the 20th anniversary. I'll start with you, Mama. Yesterday was a very moving occasion mm -hmm. because it was uh, exactly 20 years, mm -hmm. as you said, uh, since the servant of God went home. Mm -hmm. And being at that ceremony, I found it very, very enriching, mm -hmm. very uplifting. You can, I could feel, I could feel, it is difficult to say how mm -hmm. one feels, but I really felt uplifted uh, spiritually. I felt uh, edified. Mm -hmm. I was so happy to see so many people in the church, mm -hmm. you know, the clergy, the, the lady, mm -hmm. uh, both children, adults, old people, mm -hmm. it was very, very enriching. Mm -hmm. And the sermon, the prayers, mm -hmm. I could feel his presence. Wow. You see, it was, it was really saintly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thank God I was able to go to that Holy Mass. Indeed. Yeah. And uh, we really appreciate that you made the effort to get there. Mm. And uh, this is something that so many people are taste of, that uh, they feel the presence of uh, the servant of God. In his collected demeanor, he really commanded some sense of, uh, uh, the, some presence, you know, mm. uh, godly presence. Mm. Even uh, the same that they speak about uh, where his mortal remains are preserved at the resurrection garden, mm. a chapel named after him. And uh, we really thank God that uh, uh, he is trying to manifest and showing us that indeed he is in a, in a good place with the God himself who sent him to us as yes. a gift. Yes. And uh, Mr. Wanyonyi, yes. please tell us, how was the celebration like? Was it uh, something that you had expected? Did it fall short of something? Do you think we can improve some, uh, maybe probably next year? Uh. Overall, it mm -hmm. was uh, something very colorful. It mm -hmm. was very nice to see how uh, all the Christians from all walks of life mm -hmm. will come and attend, mm -hmm. and especially the presence of uh, the, the three uh, bishops, the, his, his eminency, the retired cardinal, mm -hmm. Jue, mm -hmm. and his grace, uh, Philip Agnolo, and his lordship, uh, David Kamau mm -hmm. and all the priests and the, the nuns who were there. Mm -hmm. It was so colorful. All the all the, the liturgical tanzas, the choir. It was so enriching, as my sister here has said. Mm -hmm. But only that there was something that was a little bit uh, out of out of the way, and uh, it somehow sort of uh, changed my perception mm -hmm. a little bit because. Uh, when a family member was given a chance 
to come and address the, the catering. Mm -hmm. That is to give a short uh, history of the cardinal. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he did not give the, the right information. There was quite a lot of uh, a lot of missing information and that was not very good for 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 the family people especially us the rosa namisi namisi's household it's it okay. was not very good eh? it's right probably uh, given the time and perhaps you had not met as, as a family it would be quite ideal that uh, uh, you would meet and then discuss so that your uh, representation, the person representing the family, mm -hmm. can have conclusive information uh, given uh, an opportunity to speak. And uh, all right, so um, there is a message that we received yesterday. Uh, the vice postulate, uh, Father Professor Njoroge, uh, mentioned that uh, they received uh, uh, an information from uh, the Vatican Dicastery for the Causes of Saints uh, in Rome. And they, uh, it was a positive message that they are uh, ready to sit and vote uh, to promote uh, the servant of God. That is a decision that uh, will decide if the servant of God will be promoted to the next stage of venerable. How, yes. is, how do you feel? Well, how did you take the message, Mama? I found the message very uh, encouraging, mm -hmm. uh, which indicated that we are making progress. Mm -hmm. We are making pro progress, and as it was announced in the church yesterday, that means that we have to pray. Mm -hmm. We have to pray, all of us, all of us as Kenyans, mm -hmm. not even just Catholics, but people who knew the Cardinal. Mm -hmm. The Cardinal appreciated every Kenyan, mm -hmm. every, every human being, and I feel that if he were to become a saint, mm -hmm. it would really be a plus for all of us, mm -hmm. not only the family, but our Kenyan nation and the whole world. Mm -hmm. So being told that uh, we are moving on, I found it very inspiring and even to pray more. Mm -hmm. so therefore, I appeal to all of us to join in, in this intercession to pray, to pray very hard mm -hmm. that the merciful God may actually place the servant of God among his saints. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, Absolutely, that yeah. is all our prayer. And uh, it's also, a, it's quite encouraging that to every effort we are affixing towards this process is not actually in vain. It's, it's quite uh, uh, inspiriting to know that. Uh, as for you, what uh, do you have to say about the message that was shared yesterday, Mr. Wanyoni? It was good news mm -hmm. to me, and uh, I, felt, I felt something in me when, when it was being announced. And mm -hmm. uh, I was praying in my heart that let the Cardinal, who is our uncle, let the, the Almighty God uh, effect whatever is ahead of us. Mm -hmm. That is his beatification. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was praying in my heart that if this happens, I wish it could happen in my lifetime also to see that we have a saint in our country, uh, in in our family, a saint for the whole world. Because you know, once you are a saint in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. you will be name, your name will be will be baptized. Mm -hmm. it, it, will, it will be given to so many people all over the world. Mm -hmm. So Otunga's name will be all over the world. And he, not that he was a politician or what, but he did good deeds for the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. That was my joy, and I hope it continues and it gets through during my lifetime thank you <laughs> to see it. i think that's a prayer of um, uh, most of us have silently mm -hmm. recite and uh, when i had a conversation with the ch the central committee chairman that is uh, father kaigua peter he also uh, mentioned that we pray uh, and hope against all hopes that the process does not outlive us we all want to be alive on that day and witness mm -hmm. this uh, uh, 
moment, the greatest moment, the kairos of this uh, land. All right, so we move on. There are three questions that um, uh, his lordship, uh, 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 David Kamau, who is the auxiliary bishop of uh, Nairobi Archdiocese, put forth on yesterday when he just started his homily. He asked, what do we want to remember today about the servant of God? He is someone who interacted with all people, young and old, the haves and have nots. It didn't matter who you were in society. It didn't matter who you were in your family. Uh, his arms and his doors were always open for anyone. So let's start with the, this first question. How do we want to remember him? How do you remember the servant of God, uh, Mrs. Bridget Sirongi? For me, what stood out was his humility. He was very, very humble. I remember the several times I encountered him on a personal level, mm -hmm. senior as he was in the church hierarchy. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, the top person in our church. Mm -hmm. When I met him in his residence, he never intimidated me. Mm -hmm. You see, like the way you meet your uncle, he was an uncle to me. So he just brought himself down to my level, and I imagine whoever he met, he always brought himself to their level mm -hmm. so that one feels comfortable. I felt very comfortable. I felt blessed mm -hmm. in his presence. And he was so easy to talk to that even when I was planning to get married, I went and asked him whether he could officiate mm -hmm. at my wedding, and he did. Wow. And that is something I can never forget. Mm -hmm. Then after I got married, several a number of years down the line, I invited him to come to my home here in Nairobi, mm -hmm. and he did visit me. You can see the humility mm -hmm. that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then when he came home, it was, it was so easy, you know, to entertain him as your guest mm -hmm. because of that, bringing himself down to that level where people feel comfortable with him. Mm -hmm. You are not intimidated because he's a very senior, senior person. Mm -hmm. I remember him. And then the other point that I remember him for is he always said, I will pray for you. I am praying for you. You see? Mm -hmm. And then he gives me, he has given me, he gave me three rosaries because I met him on different occasions. Mm -hmm. And each time I, I met him on my way out, he gives me a rosary. Mm -hmm. You have this, I am praying for you. Mm -hmm. And he also gave me um, a statue of Our Lady of Fatima. Mm -hmm. So he was a very holy man, very prayerful, mm -hmm. always talking about God, wishing people well. Thank so I, rem I remember him for that. Thank you very much, Mrs. C Sironge, for that. and. Uh, humility humility really stands out love and humility whenever you speak of uh, the servant of god uh, you cannot conclusively speak about him without mentioning humility love and faith yes yes uh, back to you mr wanyoni what is it that stood out uh, about uh, the servant of god's persona and life that uh, really impacted on you as a person uh, <clears throat> as uh, my sister here said, that uh, me, I have a lot of uh, things to say about him, but I'll sh summarize them. Mm -hmm. First of all, I, I came to know him when I was still staying in my grandmother's hut mm -hmm. in Moanda. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that we, uh, we have another uncle. I, I only knew uncle Christopher Nakitar. I didn't know that we have another uncle mm -hmm. called Otunga. Mm -hmm. So one time when I was a small, a small boy, one time 
Uh, when I was in my grandmother's house, that is Rosanna Missy's house in Drumba, he came. And when he came, he just sat on those firewoods against in the kitchen. In the ki not really, the, that hut was just the kitchen there, mm -hmm. and then he, he, you sleep somewhere there. Mm -hmm. So he came and sat on the firewoods next to the next to the fireplace. Mm -hmm. eh? So that's when he, uh, my grandmother Rosanna Miss told him told me, this is your uncle. That's when I knew him. Mm -hmm. He was sitting on, on firewoods, mm -hmm. not even on seats, on firewoods, down near the, the heath. Mm -hmm. So, secondly, I encountered him when he came to feast us in our home. Mm -hmm. I had not even started schooling, mm -hmm. so I was stationed to go and take care of his car. Where, because you see those days when children would see the car, they mm -hmm. could surround it. So. He, I went and took care of the car as he was still with my parents. Mm -hmm. So when he came out, he came to now to go off. Mm -hmm. When he came to go off, he, he gave me a 10 cent because I had taken good care of his car. He gave me a 10 cent. I mm -hmm. was very happy as a young boy. <laughs> that was quite a, a I, fortune back yeah, then. <laughs> I had not started schooling, imagine. I was very happy. Uh -huh. So he went. Secondly, he mm -hmm. came again at our place. I saw him. But what I remember most is when, is when I, I came to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. When I came to Nairobi, I, after, after schooling, that's after ALF, I came to look for a job in Nairobi. Uh, uh, things were not very, very nice, as you can imagine, looking for a job is not very easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was staying with my maternal angle, but things were not very nice there. Uh, and then I had to move in mm. to his residence. Not that I moved in because he wanted, mm -hmm. but where I was staying, things were not good for me. Mm -hmm. So I used to go and tell him, Ango, Ango, Papa, I'm not feeling comfortable. Mm -hmm. Things are not. So it was his last resort. Mm -hmm. He told, he, he, when I told him third day, he, he told his driver. Mm -hmm. His driver was called Francis Camoni. Mm -hmm. He told him, the driver, please go with this boy, pick his things and come with him. Mm -hmm. So when we went, he, I picked my things from my maternal angle. Now I went and he, he gave me a small tiny room mm -hmm. in his servant quarter. Mm -hmm. A small tiny room with a bed and a seat. That's where I stayed in his residence. For how long? I stayed for five years, but mm -hmm. not really continuously because mm -hmm. I was in college, mm -hmm. out in college, out. When I could close college, I could come and stay mm -hmm. in that room. Mm -hmm. So while in that room, he could come. Okay, before he go to that, to that I was very sick. When I entered his, his residence, I was very sick mm -hmm. I, because of frustrations of eh, employment. Yes. I had stopped ulcers. So he started treating me. He took me to Mata and I was operated on. Mm -hmm. I was operated on and then I came and stayed now as I was nursing my wounds. Mm -hmm. I was I stayed there. He could come and sit with me on that small chair there. Mm -hmm. Me, I sit on the bed and we talk. Mm -hmm. We could talk a little bit and, and he went and he could go. So I stayed there for all these years and he, he was a nice man. He was a nice man. He never quarreled. I never saw him quarreling with anybody. Mm -hmm. He never quarreled. He had a secretary, the priests who were secretaries to him, Father Francis Kachunga. Mm -hmm. May God rest his soul in peace. He was a very good uh, secretary to him. Uh, he could tell him anything that, they could, uh, that could assist me. I could go through the secretary. Because mm -hmm. sometimes he could be very busy. He could be very busy. Uh, he, he could come out. I remember one time he came out. We had a small garden with bananas with banana plantation, see? Mm -hmm. And we could cultivate with him, you see? He could take a chamber, and me, I take a chamber, we started digging. While he was in the, his councils and his shoes, mm -hmm. but we could dig together, remove weeds. Wow. We could dig, dig, and then we could go back. And then the last thing I can remember, you know I'm summarizing, because mm -hmm. I have a lot of story. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, almost getting married. Eh? Okay, he told me, he told me, he never told me to become a priest. You know, many people would have expected, because I was staying in his residence, mm -hmm. he could have told me to become a priest. Mm -hmm. But he, because 
he told me, uh, look for a lady and he marry. So actually, I, I, I looked for a lady <laughs> and I married. And mm. before I married, I brought her to him and he saw her, he blessed her. He told her, please, be good to him. Mm. And he told me, be good to her. Mm -hmm. And actually, up to now, we have lived together for over 30 years now. Wow, that's quite a remarkable. Over 30 years mm -hmm. now. <laughs> he was a humble man. That's what I can only remember. He was humble. And People don't know, but he could get angry. You know, nobody has ever talked. Me, I stayed with him, I know. Mm -hmm. He could also get angry, but quietly, you will never know. He never, he never flew handles no, on people. No, but he could get angry. <laughs> mm -hmm. He could get angry because uh, his, his servants, like he, he, he had four servants. Mm -hmm. All of them were different tribes. Him being a lawyer, he never employed lawyers. Mm -hmm. he, he had uh, one was a Kikuyu two Aluos mm -hmm. and uh, one was Amkamba. Mm -hmm. So they, they could come and tell me, oh, you see what Musa today was very, he was not in his moods. Mm -hmm. He was not, but he could not flare up. Mm -hmm. So they could tell him, Musa is not in his moods. Uh, myself, I witnessed because uh, sometime, if he wanted something, uh, like uh, I remember one time I went and told him, Papa, you know me, I used, I used to call him Papa. I used not to call him mm -hmm. Papa. Mm -hmm. uh, I told her, I need some clothes. You see, I had just finished high school. Mm -hmm. I need some clothes. I have to look smart. So he kept quiet. He told me I have understood. So one time I, re I stayed, I stayed. He's not answering. I went back and told him, <laughs> I told him, Papa, you see, I told you I needed some clothes. He told me, I, 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 I understood, mm. I know it. So I kept away. <laughs> and then later, like maybe two, three weeks, he called me and he gave me some money. Mm. I went and bought some clothes. So, uh, so many things I could to share. Talk, uh, you, so we could things, share. So uh. But I have a parting shot on that. Mm -hmm. Go mm. ahead. You have a parting shot. You'll give it uh, to us as yeah, a parting I, shot. I, I, I didn't. All right. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, we move on with the conversation. Just feel free to drop uh, your questions in case you have any question revolving around the life and times of the servants of God. Do not hesitate to uh, throw them towards us and we'll have uh, our abled mama here and papa to respond to them. And um, now, mom, we understand that you have been a practicing nurse. Mm -hmm. You said for how many years? For a long, long, long time. Even before my mom thought of conceiving me, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. what you said offline. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. So now, uh, in your practice, right now, we, 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 I am aware that uh, you, you retired as a nurse, but you are a trainer uh, to midwives and uh, uh, practicing or uh, student nurses. How did uh, the life, uh, the mean and everything about the servant of God influence your your family life, your professional life, how you interact with the people in the different facets and domains of life? It is true. It had uh, it, it had it had impact. Mm -hmm. The life of uh, the servant of God had impact on um, on my professional mm -hmm. life because, as we all know, he had a very soft spot mm -hmm. for the people who. Who are who are poor, who are marginalized, mm -hmm. yeah, and as a nurse, in the latter part of uh, my profession, mm -hmm. I became CEO of Nairobi Hospice, which takes care of patients who cannot be cured, mm -hmm. people who have got really life, terminal yeah, ter yeah, terminal illness, mm -hmm. and. Most institu medical institutions, they tell such people to go home. Mm -hmm. They discharge them mm -hmm. because there is nothing more that the medical profession can do to help them. Mm -hmm. And so he knew that I was in, in, uh, in this place. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I know that he loved the poor, the sick, whatever he was doing, resonated with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so it helped me to really appreciate these people, to love them. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. to love them, to embrace them, because we as a hospice were the last, the last resort. Wow. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Mama. And that reminds me why he took that uh, bold step, much uh, to the dismay of so many people, to go and live with the old people. And when journalists were all over his neck, why he took that, he made that decision, he was like, they are people like us. They deserve the love. They deserve, and besides they are, we came from them. So if we seclude them because they are old, exactly. who will take care of them? Who exactly. will interact with them? Exactly. Honestly, there has never been a, a hefty response to such a question. In fact, mm-hmm. Elizabeth, yes, when I... people were really talking, talking about his decision mm-hmm. to move to Mumbai, Nyumbai, mm-hmm. and some of them who knew us, they were saying, how can you let this happen? Mm-hmm. You mean you cannot take care of the cardinal? I said, you do not know the man. Mm-hmm. That was my response. You do not know the man. If you knew him, you wouldn't you say what questions. you are saying. You, you needed some a spiritual or di- uh, divine revelation for you to be able to understand a man of his caliber. Indeed, so uh, we continue, and at this point, I mentioned uh, uh, when we were just starting that we would be getting to know more about uh, Mama Rosa Namisi, who bore this uh, son of the land, uh, who went ahead to become the first indigenous bishop in Kenya and Africa at that time um, and uh, later on was elevated or promoted to, into the cardinalate. So just a day after his birthday, the 50th birthday, that is when he was crea- um, the, the message uh, was declared or announced uh, the cardinal. And uh, as they put it in writing, there has never been such a a better gift to celebrate your 50th anniversary. <laughs> so to Mama Rosa, we understand that Mr. Wanyonyi Kalibo spent um, uh, his childhood living with Mama Rosa Namisi. Uh, Mr. Wanyonyi, could you please tell us uh, how best or how much do you know about uh, Mama Rosa? Uh, Rosa Namisi, as I call him, as I call her Kuhu, mm-hmm. that means grandmother. Mm-hmm. She was a, a very quiet woman. Not mm-hmm. she could not speak much. That's when uh, the the few years I stayed in her her, her household. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was somebody who could not talk so much. And before I go to that, Rosa and Missy uh, comes from Uganda. Many mm-hmm. people don't know this. Eh? Mm-hmm. Her origin is in Uganda, mm-hmm. but many people think she comes from Nalondo. Mm-hmm. Her father or their home was in Uganda. Mm-hmm. This is what my uncle Christopher Nagtare mm-hmm. used to tell me. Mm-hmm. The, the father and the mother of uh, Rosa Namizi were from Uganda. Mm-hmm. And uh, so during her her childhood in Uganda, it happened that the father, the father of Rosa Namizi, had not paid dowry. Mm-hmm. You see, there's somewhere uh, where I mixed up. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can cut that. It's okay. It's uh, okay. No, no. We just want to yeah, know I, I, that's the what persona. I wanted. That's what I wanted. Yeah, the yeah. persona of uh, Mama Rosa. How was she like? Uh, in, in her character, like you say, it oh. came across like yeah. uh, it was like mother, like son, oh. like the calm, collected demeanor that we saw and witnessed. The love uh, to her, oh, the bond okay. she shared with the son, especially oh, when okay. she introduced him to you. Mm-hmm. And I get it, I get mm-hmm. it. But you can yes, cut that, okay. uh, that. You can cut that part. But I, I will come to it also a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Rosana Miz was a very calm woman. She was not quarrelsome, uh, as I knew her. She was never quarrelsome. She was very quiet, and most of the time, as 
I used to sleep in her heart. I, I was the only son. I was the only child sleeping in her heart because mm-hmm. she, she never had other, other, other children. Younger children. So she could spend most of her time at the, at the fireplace. Mm-hmm. At night, she used not to sleep very, very mm-hmm. much. But there was something disturbing her. It was about her son, Cardinal Tunga. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll come to that later. Mm-hmm. But she was a, a calm woman, very calm. And peop, people around, especially her fellow, her fellow uh, old ladies, mm-hmm. used to like her. They could come to her house mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. food because all the time there was food in her house. And she could give everybody food. People could eat from her house. Mm-hmm. So she was very quiet, calm, and... Uh, Peaceful, a peaceful woman. That's what I can remember. She was a very peaceful woman. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Now, l- allow me just uh, to read a uh, part of the feedback that you've received uh, from the viewers. Uh, one says, wow, the nephew resembles the servant of God. He's actually, uh, you are, are you the nephew? Yes, nephew, actually. And then uh, uh, another one says, I am glad my son is called Michael. On that very note, have you named any of your children after the servant of God? No. Oh, why? <laughs> have you? I have not named, but I named Kuhu Grandi Mother, mm-hmm. Rosa Namizi. Mm. I have named my daughter, who is an engineer. Mm-hmm. I named her Rosa Namizi. When I named her dad, I told Cardinal Dunga, I have named my, my, my daughter after your mother. She no. He asked me, "Have you baptized her?" <laughs> yeah, that's very paramount. Yeah. Uh, the, the, Rosa Namisa has to receive all the sacraments of yeah. the Catholic Church. Yes. <laughs> now you cannot. We cannot have as uh, the entire family naming uh, the servant of God because they understand the Nabangis have. Uh, uh, they have named after the servant of God. We have Simiu Godi. He also told me that he has somebody named after the servant of God. And uh, quite a number of them uh, uh, that uh, uh, have uh, really embraced the name. But mm-hmm. if you embrace that name, you make sure that you embrace the faith and take this child through this, uh, uh, the, yes. the, the journey can of I, faith. Can I answer something? Or are you yes, please. You know, according to our tradition, the Bukusus, mm-hmm. you cannot name somebody when he's still alive. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's why most of us will, name, will not name him. Oh. Mm-hmm. But once he's gone, like in Christopher's home, mm-hmm. his, his last wife has named a son called Morris Michael Gatnotunga. Mm-hmm. Because this son was born after the cardinal had passed on. Oh, now we understand. Okay, mm-hmm. now the, the message is home. And um, at this point, uh, let me ask the other question. That uh, w- There were three questions. Uh, what reasons do we put forth for giving him a respect? Because his lordship, David Kamau, also said that there are so many cardinals who have passed on, so many prelates in the Catholic Church. Most of them are not remembered. Why do we hold uh, the servant of God dearly uh, to an extent that we have to remember him annually? Mama, my. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, sorry to say, Mm -hmm. the others, I don't know them, Mm -hmm. but this is somebody I knew. Mm -hmm. This is somebody I sat with. This is someone I ate with. Mm -hmm. This is someone I hold dear because he officiated at my wedding. Mm -hmm. He was my uncle. Mm -hmm. And also, that aside, because of the because of the virtues, mm-hmm. because of the virtues, the things he valued, his humility, mm-hmm. his faith, he was special. Mm-hmm. He was God's special person. Mm-hmm. And you know, he loved everybody. He loved everybody. And you see, if you love, that love will come back. Absolutely. It will come back. 
-hmm. Yes. Because it's, a man of his caliber, he would have even created a boundary. Exactly. No one would have questioned that. So many people of a higher level uh, do that. They create that cocoon of themselves mm -hmm. and they do not reach out mm -hmm. to the lowly, to the other people, because yeah. they want uh, to maintain their prestigious titles exactly. and, and levels. Exactly. But for him, he was just down there, down, down to, to earth. earth. Exactly. Absolutely. So at this point, we have had many people mention, giving examples that uh, the servant of God would gift them a rosary. As a, if you are a Catholic, you understand how much of uh, importance and significance we place to the rosary uh, prayers. And uh, Mr. Wanyoni right here uh, spent some time with the servant of God um, in 2003 when he was hospitalized. And he has something to tell us about uh, how was the experience, especially towards his uh, last days on earth. Thank you. Uh, a little bit back, mm -hmm. when I was in his residence, if you wanted to meet him uh, in the evenings, you would wait for him after supper because he used to take supper at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then after that, he'll come out, pace up and down saying the rosary. Mm -hmm. He'll pace up and down saying the rosary from 8 in, in the night, mm -hmm. up and down, pacing the rosary, whether he was alone or whether he was with his secretary, Father Francis Kachunga, he would pace up saying the rosary all the time. And on that note, when he was in Mata, his last days, he used to have a small bluish rosary, which he used to recite most of the time, most of the time. And when uh, I think I feasted him like two days before he passed on. So uh, when I read him there in the hospital, I could see him showing, pointing his hands, his, his hand at, at the wall mm -hmm. as he was asleep on the bed. He would point his, heart, his hand at the wall saying, Mary, Mary, mm -hmm. Mary. I didn't know what he meant. So, uh, but later, after he passed on, is mm. when something it dawned turned on me, on me mm -hmm. saying maybe he was seeing an apparition of Mother Mary, maybe beckoning mm -hmm. him or what, I don't know, because mm -hmm. he was saying, Mary, looking at the wall there, up, mm -hmm. fixing his eyes at the wall. So he was, but he was a man of prayer. Mm -hmm. He was a man of prayer. That one, I know, he was a man of prayer. Mm -hmm. And also, what I came to learn, we should pray for our priests. Anybody religious, they have a difficult life. Mm -hmm. It's not easy the way people see. It's not something easy. Mm -hmm. Because I will see it with my uncle. Eh? Sometime in his house, eh? mm -hmm. you know, sometimes he could, st he could stay alone. If his secretary, Father Francis Kachunga, will not be around, he will stay alone mm -hmm. in the house. And he could enter that house. It's cold, it's quiet. And he, he will stay alone, you mm -hmm. see. But he used to pray. At at five in the in the evening, you could see his lights, his chapel lights on. On, he was always praying in the evening and in the morning. And when he prays, or when he could pray, he could trust all the way. Like he could come for for mass, mm -hmm. he puts on all that gear and say mass. Even if he was alone, I remember one time he invited me to to be with him in his mass in the chapel there mm -hmm. at his residence. Mm -hmm. So when, I, when he was saying the mass, mm -hmm. he, he, he realized I was not responding mm -hmm. the way I'm supposed to respond. Mm -hmm. So after the mass, he told me, so you don't know these responses. So he gave me a book mm -hmm. uh, for mass order. Mm -hmm. He gave me a book so that I could be following. <laughs> so you can master the prayer. Yes. <laughs> Great, interesting. So this is, uh, he was such a prayerful man. He was uh, um, a very staunch uh, Catholic, always uh, 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 encouraging people to pray and reminding them that, that I will pray for you. I think we also heard from uh, his lordship, uh, David mm -hmm. Kamau, that the, at some point uh, when they were going for a fundraiser, he was ahead of them, but 
He pulled over and parked us at the side of the road and started reciting a rosary for whom? For those who were at the back. So you can imagine. And then he placed other people's interest and well-being ahead of everything, of even his himself. He wasn't self-centered no. at all. All right, so uh, that is quite profound. Thank you very much. And uh, right now, because uh, our time is almost running up, I wish you to tell us right now we are, the process is ongoing and uh, it, there is quite a lot that is required. Could you please share with us uh, uh, what is your contribution as family members? What role are you playing uh, to support the cause? Well, first and foremost, what he taught us, mm -hmm. prayer. Absolutely. Prayer. Mm -hmm. And we make individual contributions and towards the cause and perhaps at some stage as a family, mm -hmm. we could come together and do a kind of a, a fundraiser mm -hmm. so that we have some consolidated uh, resources mm -hmm. towards the towards the cause. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost is prayer. Mm -hmm. But we appreciate that the cause needs monetary resources. Mm -hmm. So we also have to contribute towards that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are you doing as a family to keep his legacy alive? We have people who are, uh, uh, they are peop they, they, we can see in the country they put up uh, some uh, monumental buildings that are named after him. At the Resurrection Garden we have the Memorial Hall, we have the Cardinal Otunga Chapel. As a family have you thought of something that uh, would actually uh, keep the name of the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga, for generations to come? I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure uh, as a family, mm -hmm. but for on my part, I remember mm -hmm. we had donated mm -hmm. a lot of land to him mm -hmm. uh, when he became bishop and cardinal. Mm -hmm. uh, we gave about 50 about 50 acres or so mm -hmm. to him mm -hmm. so that he can uh, he can start like a mission mm -hmm. to have the nuns to come and uh, and stay there mm -hmm. and start a mission and maybe a church mm -hmm. and although he has moved on mm -hmm. that land has been donated to, to the, the current to the, to, to the church mm -hmm. and to the current bishop mm -hmm. i know that that land, they are planning to do something on it. So mm. for our family, for our family, we know that this is something we had given to the cardinal, mm -hmm. and the cardinal has given it to the church, mm -hmm. and that will carry on his legacy. Absolutely. But uh, the bigger family, mm -hmm. maybe people are, could be thinking mm -hmm. of something in their own areas, but really I wouldn't know. Great. But for us, we have done something. Great, thank you very much for that. And uh, to you, Mr. Wanyonye, what are you doing in honor of uh, the servant of God and uh, towards uh, the, his beatification and canonization process? Uh, for us, as a, as a family from our end, mm -hmm. uh, we, we are going to do something because I'm going soon to meet my uh, the siblings of uh, Christopher and Akitare, mm -hmm. and myself with a larger part of uh, his family. Mm -hmm. Because what we wanted or what we request is, is this. Eh? Mm -hmm. Where our, our grandmother, Rosa Namiz, was buried, we would wish that we do something uh, memorable around the, her grave, mm -hmm. which, could, which could be in the honor of Hassan Rosa, uh, Hassan Morris Michael Cardinal Tunga. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I remember he also told me, he also told me he wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe people don't know this. He wanted to do something at his homeland, you see, especially at his father's grave. 
seemingly there was there was some land around the grave that was left mm -hmm. and he knew that so he wanted to do something there mm -hmm. but he is like it, the land was see, maybe was taken over mm -hmm. so he was not happy mm -hmm. he because he used to say uh, I wanted to do something he could say that to me I wanted to do something but it went mm -hmm. that's what he used to tell, him, to tell me now as a family ourselves we are going to sit down and see if we, what we can do, especially around our grandmother's grave, because that grave does not now belong to us. The mm. land was sold around that, around that grave. The land was sold. And we, we, we want to request the people who, who, who put that land around the grave of our grandmother, if we can negotiate mm -hmm. and uh, we, we swipe, we exchange mm -hmm. some acreage of land and they give us the release that area maybe two acres for us we are just beseeching them that they listen to our our, our call as good neighbors mm -hmm. and we we exchange the land so that we can do something monumental mm -hmm. at the grave of our, our our grandmother for in the honor of her son cardinal morris otunga indeed because uh, as we say uh, without uh, the mother the way we revere Mother Mary because God deemed it uh, her befitting and the right person, the holiest person, to bear us uh, the Savior, Jesus Christ. So God deemed Mama Rosa befitting to bear us the gift of grace, his uh, uh, grace or his eminence, uh, the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga. So it is quite paramount uh, that uh, we do something for her. We have uh, uh, Rosetta Kirui who says, such a humble soul, continue resting in peace. Thank you, Rosetta, for watching. Kimathi Edward says uh, he is following. And so many of you who are following us on television and on our social media platforms, but uh, this time our time is up. But it is a tradition that we give a few seconds to our guests to give their parting shots because before we close the discussion. So I'll start with uh, Mrs. Bridget Sirengo. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, once again, I just wanted to appreciate the servant of God mm -hmm. for who he was. Mm -hmm. And we continue praying individually, uh, family level, and as a nation, so that uh, his canonization comes through. Mm -hmm. Because it will really be an honor to all of us, mm -hmm. because he loved us all. Mm -hmm. There was no discrimination. Mm -hmm. So it will really be an honor to all of us. Mm -hmm. I also appreciate that this process um, takes some resources. Mm -hmm. So I appeal, I appeal to the to the faithful mm -hmm. to support the cause by contributing mm -hmm. something. Um, it could be material. It could it could be monetary. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can guide us. Those of us who do, who might not know. Mm -hmm. how to make that contribution, mm -hmm. how they can go about it. Mm -hmm. But I am really uh, grateful that God gave us uh, such a man to be among us. Mm -hmm. And once again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mai, for coming. Thank, thank you for you. that uh, hefty parting shot and a reminder to all to support the cause uh, in every way that is possible. And uh, to you, uh, Mr. Wanyonyi, what is your parting shot uh, before we close our conversation? For me, I would say, uh, may the Almighty God help us, all, the, all of us, the, the family, the larger family, and even all the faithful Kenyans to help this part of, 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 of his beatification. Mm -hmm. And also, on the family level, I would like to thank the family, two families of, of Kalasinga Suti mm -hmm. and Mahanu Suti, who donated a part of their land to build the Mwanda Church in Pungoma. In, in Bungoma where the cardinal comes from. Mm -hmm. I thank them so much. And also, uh, I would like to say something as I live. What the cardinal said and what he told me. He told me, remember this, always 
tell your children mm -hmm. and your children's children to remember that once a time there was some sort of this caliber in, in, in their family. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. Remember to tell your children, children's children, that mm -hmm. in their family there was some sort of this caliber who existed. Great which is quite paramount and we are here as Capuchin TV to record these moments uh, for years and years and decades and centuries to come we believe all these conversations and discourses will be available to the people and they will for sure know that at a given point there lived a holy man amongst us. Nasi nimai. Thank you for coming. God bless you, all of you, the extended family members, where the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Tunga, hailed from. And uh, we appreciate that you spare your time from your busy schedules uh, to come and speak to us so that we get a, a broader understanding of who this great man of God was. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank Great. you so much. Okay. Uh, for all of you, we really appreciate taking your time to walk with us throughout this conversation. And uh, uh, just to, to remind you, as uh, Mrs. Uh, Sirengo here has put it, there is need for all of us to support this holy process of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Tunga, through prayers and donations, because uh, it is our process. His Grace Philip Subiranyolo yesterday, as he always reiterates in every uh, celebration, that uh, this is our process. We need to own it as individuals, as groups, as families, and uh, family that uh, a servant of God placed so much significance to, trying his best throughout his life to fortify and uh, inculcate positive values into the family. So if you wish to support this course, we uh, you can do it through Lipa Naimpesa pay bill business number is 488700. Uh, pay bill business number is 488700. And then the account number is uh, COB, your name. COB, your name. So support with whatever legal could be 10 shillings, 50 shillings, 100 shillings, or even more because uh, we it is not uh, limited. But whatever legal you contribute uh, definitely will go a long way towards supporting this entire process that we are eagerly all looking forward to that great day when he will be made saint. So I wish to appreciate my team that has been working behind the scenes. Uh, we have uh, uh, on the camera of uh, Felix Juma and uh, Wilfred Matundura. On our visuals, we have uh, Sami Cherubor and uh, Josephine Mudoni. And on sound, we have Eric Otieno. On transmission desk, we have uh, Peter Mwangi. Thank you very much for your concerted effort and for your contribution. We continue to have our discourses every Thursday at 11 a.m. My name is Sasha Elizabeth. I wish you a good afternoon. Goodbye. Journey to Sainthood The life and times of the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Tunga, with Asasha Elizabeth. <laughs> Capuchin TV. Ni barakan to kakwa mungu. Kweli, kweli ni barakan. Kweli ni barakan to kakwa mungu. Kweli, kweli ni barakan. 
endelea kutazama Kapuchin TV kitambulisho katoliki Una persona sin techo que muere en la calle nunca va a aparecer en la primera página de los buscadores de Internet o de los noticieros. ¿Cómo hemos podido llegar a este nivel de indiferencia? ¿Cómo dejamos que la cultura del descarte, en la que millones de hombres y mujeres no valen nada frente a los beneficios económicos, ¿Cómo dejamos que esta cultura domine nuestras vidas, nuestras ciudades, nuestro modo de vivir? Se nos va a endurecer el cuello de tanto mirar al otro lado para no ver esta situación. Por favor, dejemos de hacer invisibles a los que están al margen de la sociedad. Ya sea por motivos de pobreza, de independencia, enfermedades psíquicas o minusvalías. Centremos en la acogida en acoger a todas las personas que nos necesitan. La cultura de la acogida, de recibir, de dar techo, de dar hogar, de dar amor, de dar calidez humana. Oremos para que las personas que viven al margen de la sociedad, en condiciones de vida infrahumanas, no sean olvidadas por las instituciones y nunca sean descartadas.